we want to evaluate the limit of the function as x approaches infinity. For this example, we'll take a look at three methods for determining this limit at infinity. In previous examples, the rational functions had polynomials in the numerator and denominator. In this case, though, because of the square root in the numerator, the numerator is not a polynomial, but we can still apply some of the same rules to determine this limit. Remember, the square root of x is equal to x to the power of 1 half. Let's rewrite the limit in that form. We have the limit of the quantity x to the power of 1 half minus 6x squared divided by the quantity 7x plus 5x squared as x approaches infinity. Let's first determine the limit by using degree. And again, even though the numerator is not a polynomial, we can still use the idea of identifying the highest power on the variable. So in the numerator, the highest power in x is two. In the denominator, the highest power in x is two. And therefore we can treat this as if the degree of the numerator and denominator are the same, which referring to our notes below, if the degree of the numerator and denominator are the same, the limit is the ratio of the leading coefficients which in this case would just be negative six divided by five or negative six fifths. A second method would be to only use the term with the highest degree in the numerator and denominator to determine the limit. So again, going back to the original limit, the term with the highest power on x in the numerator is negative six x squared. The term with the highest power on x in the denominator is five x squared. The idea here is in the numerator negative six x squared is going to outweigh or overpower the square root of x as x approaches infinity. In the denominator, five x squared is going to outpower or outweigh the seven x as x approaches infinity. And therefore the given limit is equal to the limit of just negative six x squared divided by five x squared as x approaches infinity. Well now simplifying, notice how we just get the limit of negative six fifths, since x squared divided by x squared simplifies to one as x approaches infinity, which of course gives us negative six fifths. And then the third method, the more algebraic method, is to divide every term in the numerator and denominator by the highest power of x in the denominator, which in this case should be x squared. So let's also show this method. We will divide every term in the function by x squared and we'll use the form of the function where we have the square root as x to the power of 1 half. And now we simplify. x to the 1 half divided by x squared is equal to 1 divided by x to the power of 3 halves minus six x squared divided by x squared is six divided by, in the denominator, seven x divided by x squared simplifies to seven divided by x, plus five x squared divided by x squared simplifies to five. Remember from here, when we have a fraction where the numerator is a constant and the denominator contains a variable that approaches positive or negative infinity, the value approaches zero. So one divided by x to the power of three halves approaches zero as x approaches infinity negative six is not affected by x. In the denominator, seven divided by x approaches zero as x approaches infinity, and five is not affected by x. Simplifying, once again, we just have negative six divided by five or negative six fifths. So all three methods are valid methods for determining this limit at infinity. I hope you found this helpful.